Hi, I'm Anissa Foltz, a.k.a. Young Niece. Hi, I'm Anthony Veneziali, a.k.a. Two Touch. And, and this, this is... Free... <laughs> and this is Freestyle 101. <laughs> See We start by making people feel comfortable in their skin. Um, and freestyle starts with a beat. So we start with the basics, which is boots and cuts. Um, people think that beatboxing is this huge elaborate thing, which it is, but also anyone can do it. If you just say boots and cuts and use the, the plosives in those words, boots and cuts, then you are also beatboxing. Um, and then we also will do something called gibberish rap, which is my personal favorite because you are saying gibberish over a beat and your fear is taken away because you can't be judged in that moment. So it's as simple as da 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 ba ba do ba da ba be a ba ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba da ba di. And then we'll take that and then focus on the rhyme at the end of the word. So that would turn into ba ba da ba do ba da ba ba da ba cat da ba ba da ba da ba Anthony's hat. And generally, you know, for us, a big part of it, too, is figuring out your relationship to the beat, right? So once you have that beat, you have something to react to. So that beat should stir up a feeling or an emotion in you. So if that boots and cuts things happen and you kind of get good enough at it so that you can, like, create or lay down that beat, you know, then a... Like, what does that cause to happen in you? What's your reaction to that emotionally? And that will lead into that, that gibberish as well. So that emotional reaction can be like a da, zupo, ziba, da, zaba, diba, da, da. You know, that relationship is, is key to ha making that, that kind of first step happen. So we have the beatboxer, right? And the beatboxer is the heart. They're the foundation. Um, it's about bringing yourself to the process and after a while after practicing you will find that rhythm you will find your internal rhythm so it's not about judging yourself it's about bringing who you are to the table and what you can do in the academy we have people from all different walks of life we have people that are trying to be rappers we have people that have never rapped before and we're throwing everybody into this melting pot to just try this thing and say hey whoever you are bring it and we accept you. And I think that's what's so powerful about what Freestyle of Supreme is, what Freestyle of Supreme Academy is, is that we give all these different types of people a platform to figure out what this is for them. There's something highly useful about a beatboxer being IRL, right? Or, or at least being in that virtual space with somebody because you can react to somebody's arrhythmic approach, right? Like. Mm -hmm. Think about jazz. Think about, uh, you know, soloing over top of something. Yes, those musicians generally know the rules to break the rules. Um, but a, a beatboxer who is really adept at this can kind of slide and slow that metronome down if need be to match mm -hmm. where that person is or will hopefully be going. Typically, a 16 would be on the long side of things. Um, you know, coming into this as a newbie with these guys who've been doing this thing together for 16 years, it's a little nerve wracking. And, um, you know, trying to count bars while freestyling is the hardest thing in the world. But because I've done it so many times, it's now just a feeling to me, which I am starting to realize now it's awesome. You can just feel the bars, you know when to stop. And uh, somebody's going to be right there to pick it up from where you left off. Very basically, you've got a structure of math that exists in almost all music. And it's so beautiful. So a lot of people who like approach it from a feeling, which is amazing and kind of like just intuitively get it, that's amazing and that's great. But if not, there's this great component that's just counting measures and bars. So typically we do four on the floor. That means a four over four time signature. So for every beat, for every measure, there's four beats inside of that measure. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was two measures that I just did. And now when, when so when young niece is saying, oh, typically 16 is about how long someone goes, that's 16 bars. So generally you'll get 
somewhere between four and eight rhymes inside of that. So that's another way to kind of feel it out. Like, oh, I had some couplets or what's my rhyme scheme. So all of those things can kind of help you to find your way into like what your, did you, did you tell your story? Did you make your point? As Andre 3000 says, sometimes 16 ain't enough, right? (laughs) Sometimes you're going to go longer than that. We do a uh, shake out, which is really just getting into our bodies, uh, counting down one, two, three, four, five, which you can see in the documentary as the guys get slower over the years. <laughs> we also do this thing called the sound bomb, which is one of my favorites, where we basically just stand and in a room try to make music together or whatever it is that comes out of it we make sounds and it's basically just getting in tune with each other getting into our bodies getting into our minds slowing down and breathing as one Um, and it's a really meditative experience so i really enjoy that we also do trading twos where we'll get words and throw them at each other and go back and forth just like fire spitting back and forth just to get up on our feet and then something called the non-rhyme game where you take a, a line that is supposed to rhyme but you can't make it rhyme. So that's just waking up your brain and <laughs> making you uh, think on your feet. And um, yeah, just being in the room together. We also say we got your back before we go on stage every time because you have to. We're a team. Right. Here's, how the non- <laughs> here's how the non-rhyme game works. I'll set you up, Anissa, and then you come up with a synonym yeah. for what I set you up with, right? Okay. Right. Um, Anissa did it like this, and now she'll do it like that. She always will reference my... Dogs. (laughs) It's really hard. You think that not rhyming is easy, but it's not. (laughs) Yeah, luckily, you know, the underpinnings and the the ethos of improvisation really helps to drive that that, um, concept of you're, you're there to service the scene partner. You're, you're there to make the other look good. And for us, quite often, that's the audience, right? Improvisational scene partner is not only here on the stage sometimes, it's also out in the house. Mm-hmm. And so if we're trying to honor them and make them look good, that probably means we'll be outside of ourselves. Uh, and being of service can like really change the game in that way uh, for, for a lot of, of the synaptic connections that, that might have been formed around what hip hop has been for you or was for you. So, you know, Utkarsh came from like a rap battle scene. And so you needed by necessity to create that muscle, to create those neural networks that said, cool, I'm going to have to tell you why I'm the best and why you are the worst. Um, And that's awesome. Like, you know, that comes from really strong traditions. Like you can even trace it back to, you know, some of these concepts of, hey, our best warrior has to take on your best warrior, like our tribes taking on your tribe. And and here's why we think we're going to crush you. Like that's Maori, that's Zulu. Like there's, there's lots of different uh, references inside of rap battle that, that trace back to some of those, those necessary moments to flex. Um, and then in a the theatrical community, what we're trying to do is build the community. So trying to turn that on its head and find a way to say, hey, here's why you're amazing. Here's how, why this is such a great moment that we're engaging in together. Um, that's just a whole different set of, of neural networks. Uh, that takes practice and time, and, and hopefully that becomes your, your go-to. I love that the audience is our scene partner. We can't do it without them, so we're playing off of each other. The energy when I come out on stage, I'm taking it from them, and I'm giving it back to them. And I think that's what we're doing. We're having a conversation. I also love that we have inside jokes with the audience because we're doing this show just for this audience it's never going to be the same again one time i was walking um (laughs) in times square i think going to a show and someone shouted at me period cramps and i was like huh but that (laughs) was something that i took and uh i took that from the audience that show and that person had that inside joke with me and they were like that's the word you took when you did the thing i was like oh yeah okay that's great so <laughs> that's what I love, having inside jokes with the crowd and taking jokes that we made at the beginning of the show that they remember um, and throwing it back to them. So we do that a lot, calling back to the beginning of the show. And it's just fun. I don't know. It's, it's special every time because that audience is specific to that show. It's never going to be the same. Thinking that they have to be stuck in a box. 
thinking that they have to rhyme all the time. That was my first mistake. That had to be on point, but it's about telling your story. Um, also, once I got into a run of this, I started to compare myself to the other shows that I had done earlier in the week or last week. But you can't do that. You can't get down on yourself. You can't, oh, that wasn't my best because you don't have time to think about it, first of all. <laughs> you have to keep going. But um, it's, it doesn't matter also. It, the audience is going to take it however they do. It's always a new audience. It's new to them. And if I ever had a day where I was like, mm, that wasn't my best show, I would go outside and everyone would be like, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. And that just kind of humbles you. It's not about you. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I've, I've learned to kind of take every show as its own thing. And that was really hard to learn doing a run. Almost everybody plans their first rhyme before they that speak. Too. <laughs> and so if you're planning, you're, you're a bit staying in that, that judging brain. And then you do it sometimes, sometimes it doesn't come out that way because rapping in your head, freestyling in your head, everyone's pretty damn good at that. It's about uh, matching it to your mouth. So every time you're like, oh, I have this perfect rhyme. It's like, cool, say it out loud because those are different. Uh, you're dealing with a whole <laughs> slew of parts of your brain that need to have that connection. And so that's just time and practice. And because it's not about the first two rhymes, it rarely is. It's actually about the generally more importantly, the last two, which is how mm -hmm. Ugarsh kind of sets up his stories. Yep. Um, but also getting from point A to point B to point C, like all that stuff in between is much more important than you like being like, I started out with the word called hat. I did it like this and now I did it like that. Where do I go now? <laughs> anything is possible. A chair on the, sta on the stage can be a bridge if you want it to. Anthony could be a, a Washington monument. Um, and when we get to True, it's a comedy show, but there have been multiple times where we're all just on stage crying and no one planned for that to happen. The audience didn't know that was gonna happen. We didn't know we were gonna go on this emotional journey together, but it's almost like there are rules, but there are no rules. You got to show up. You got to show up. If you're checked out or if you're not present, mm. then it's then there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. There's a tendency that I definitely have. Hey, white guy, uh, which is to over explain things. Um, <laughs> and 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 you'd rather leave them with 16 where they go, I want to hear more. Then with 32, where they're like, I heard everything. <laughs> There's no one way to freestyle. Uh, when you think of freestyle, you don't think about singing, really. And I am a singer first. And in this platform, I've been encouraged to use my voice. So, yeah, I could spit some hot fire, but I could also sing to you pretty in the same, in the same verse, you know? <laughs> I also generally thought that freestyling... Uh, and battling was supposed to be, I'm the best, and someone else is talking about they're the best, and kind of going off of each other and saying like, your hat looks dumb. Sorry, Anthony, not you, but, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But uh, in Freestyle Love Supreme, it's all love, and I love that so much. It's just positivity. And as I said, when you're having a bad day and you go on that stage, you feel that love. And that's so important to make a good show.